Hey guys, what's going on? We just got done doing a little free diving and the boys speared some sheep's head. We're with Captain Brandon and Victor and they both speared some sheep's head. I didn't spear any, but I have a lot of awesome fish footage for you guys. So I'm gonna show you the fish footage and then I'm gonna meet you back at the fillet table to fillet some sheep's head and then in the kitchen to cook them up. So I hope you enjoy. to do a sheep's head panini sandwich, which I'm really excited for. I think it's gonna be absolutely delicious. So these fish are kind of crazy looking. Look at these teeth that they have. 
If I could actually open their mouth, which it's like frozen shut, they got lip, rows and rows of these ugly teeth because they eat things off the pilings, they eat barnacles, they eat, you know, they can crack into the oysters, they eat crabs, shellfish, all that kind of crazy stuff. Now, I think because they eat those hard things and they have to digest it, they have a giant stomach. They have a huge rib cage. So when I go to start to fillet this thing, I'm gonna start at the head and I'm going to avoid this entire middle part where his ribs are because it's gonna save you a lot of pain and agony if you just avoid it at the beginning. They also got these really thick scales, so you gotta use a little bit of muscle to get in there. So, like I said, I'm gonna go all the way down, basically to the beginning of this anal fin right here. Big, hard scales. They also got a really hard head and a hard gill plate. And I remember one time I went spearing in the canal actually for the sheep's head because a lot of times if you um, break off the barnacles off the side of the pilings, the sheep's head come and eat that stuff. And one day I jumped in the water and I shot, I think two big sheep's head. And I remember I shot one and bounced right off of his head and I was like, whoa, can't do that anymore. <laughs> so I made that first initial cut with a more stiff blade. This is the six inch curved Dexter. Now I'm switching over to an eight inch flexible fillet knife to fillet the rest of it. So I turned it towards me so I can start from the top and I'm gonna take my knife and just glide down the fish. Okay, so after I made the first initial cut, I'm gonna take my knife and just start going down the bones, separating the meat. And I'm gonna keep going until I get to the backbone of the fish. Now, once you get down to the backbone, kind of with every fish, you're gonna wanna change the angle of your knife to more like this so you can get the meat on the back side of the backbone. Gotta get over those rib bones a little bit. Breaking through the pin bones. It's not an easy fish to fillet. No, it's definitely not. So there you go. There's your first half. It's not now an look. easy fish to fillet because of this right here. That rib cage messes a lot of people up. It's massive. Like I said, they have this giant rib cage that is really hard to fillet over and it doesn't have a lot of meat over it. So that's why you just want to try to avoid the rib cage as best as possible. But not too bad. Now I'm gonna skin it still with that same eight inch flexible knife. I like skinning with a nice flexible blade. So start at the tail, one hand holding on, the other hand going across. Hard to fillet, but very easy to skin. There you go, there's your skin. I'm gonna go back to this knife and just cut out these pin bones here. So you get your bloodline at the same time you get your pin bones. As you can see, there's a bunch of bones all along that little piece right there. So there is your beautiful sheep's head fillet. I'm going to fillet the other side of the sheep's head and then I think I'm going to fillet two more and then I will meet you guys in the kitchen for today's lunch. Okay, so here are my three sheep's head um, fillets and I have sliced them just in pieces like this because again, they're going in sandwiches. So I want a nice little piece like that. And I just want to mention one more thing. If you guys are interested in any of the knives I use, they are Dexter Outdoors knives and you guys can save 20% with my code BROOK20. I'll have a link in the description, DexterOutdoors.com, 20% with code BROOK20. See you in the kitchen. <music>
oregano, and then lastly, paprika. And then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna flip them over and do the same thing on the other side. Time to go in with our fish. So we have a pan with some butter and olive oil that's nice and hot, and here we go. The flays look beautiful. So as our fish is cooking over there, we're gonna start preparing our sandwiches. So first step is we have some pesto, and I've used this brand of pesto before and I really like it, so either you can do homemade pesto if you like, or just use your favorite brand, or you know, just try one from the store and give it a shot. So I'm going to put pesto on both sides of the bread. Time to flip our fish. Thing for the sandwich is we're gonna do a little bit of spinach. This is the bottom part of our bun. Oh, and these are ciabatta buns. I don't think I mentioned that before. They're a little thicker than what I was imagining to use. It's gonna be hard to put them in the panini maker, I think, with how thick they are. I think it'll work. This is the top part of the bun. We're gonna take some mozzarella cheese. If you're confused, this is for four sandwiches. <laughs> so you have your tops and your bottoms. And then a beautiful tomato. All right, so now I'm gonna take out the fish. Next batch going in. Now we're going to take our beautiful sheep's head and lay them. We're gonna try to make these fit perfect like that. So let's do two at a time and get them in. See what I'm saying about them being giant? Look at that. We'll see how it works. It fits, it ships, bro. I mean, it's getting a little <laughs> toasted, right? I don't know, look at it. It's not even touching the top of the bun. Smush them a little. Yeah, there you go. Push, them, push the other one back in a little bit. Yes. Okay. First two coming off. All right, Dad and Mom, you guys are the first victims. Thank you. Great. I want to be a victim. <laughs> <laughs> See you. So I just had my panini and it was delicious. I mean, good ciabatta bread, um, a good pairing of tomato, mozzarella, the pesto is all really good. And the sheep's head itself is just a super mild, flavorful, flaky fish. I really liked it. I thought it was a creative idea, so good job, Ricky. It's good. Yeah, the sheep's head uh, was, was very, very nice. It's a delicious fish. Uh, I like the uh, panini too, Brett. Thank you. Well, well, it was nice to see the panini maker get out again. It's still working. Um, I loved having this for lunch. I love the sheep's head too. I like the blackening on it. It tastes delicious. I hope we get to make them again. Oh, super good. This is my second one. And uh, fish sandwiches don't get much more gourmet than this. Wow, gourmet. Thanks, fish.